And speaking of preparation, our next guest says when families are well equipped with knowledge about the facts of caregiving, it will truly make a huge difference when an unexpected life changing emergency can occur involving a loved one. Elder care expert Carolyn Brent joins us now to tell us about being a caregiver and why practicing self care goes hand in hand with that role. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, good morning, thank you. I wanted to share one thing. This is what caregiving looks like, the real truth of caregiving. This was 12 years of me being a caregiver for my dad. It's the medical, financial, the legal, and whatever expenses for private assistant living or long-term care. And that's what families have to prepare for. Don't wait till there's a sudden and unexpected emergency. I share with folks all over the world, get your end of life, not only for your parents, but for yourself. I'm 64 years old. I share with folks, you got to start as young as possible. I'll say 18 years old, because if you have a sudden and unexpected emergency and you're in the hospital and you don't have any end of life wishes or a healthcare proxy in place, you're saying government or state, take care of me. I don't have anything in place, so you take care of me. So I always tell people, don't wait, take care of yourself. And the way you take care of yourself, caregivers, you must give yourself at least one hour per day. Guaranteed, you have to. You have to go for respite, go to the gym if you have to. I know in California, I live in Florida, their gyms are open here, and I, I, do, say, I do it for safety purposes in mind when I do go, but find a way to take care of your own body is so important for a caregiver because keep in mind, this is what caregiving really looks like. You're dealing with the person's entire life, plus you're trying to deal with your own life as well. Yeah, I, I see that. I'm sure caregiving, it is a very, very tough job. Now let's talk about what are yes. the key signs that a loved one may need more assistance outside of their family's help? When, when, when your loved one, in my case, my father would call me and say, Carolyn, someone has turned the water on in my basement and the basement was flooded. Really crazy things that you know that shouldn't happen. Or your loved one is eating spoiled and rotten food in their refrigerator. Or they used to be really immaculate housekeepers and their house is a mess. Pay attention, look and see what's different about your loved one. That those are telltale signs that maybe dementia is creeping in or something is going on. So pay attention to your loved one and listen to them. If they tell you that they're not feeling good, look a little bit deeper because there could be something like a bladder infection that can actually snowball into other uh, problems, health problems. So you want to catch things early. And if you live far away from your parents, Build yourself a village. Find out who their next door neighbors are. Have the next door neighbor or even call the police department and have a wellness check if you suspect that your loved one needs help. Now, Carolyn, what are some of the, I guess, financial things you need to think about or even um, legal implications when you have a caregiver, maybe it's someone in the family or someone outside of the family, um, caring for that loved one? Well, financially, that's another subject I, I, that takes forever, but this is what the deal is. The average uh, cost of living for a caregiver, if they're going into private assistant living, if they're sharing a room is $89,000 a year. If they have a private room, you're talking about $100,000 a year. So if you bring your parent or your loved one in your home, you're gonna have to convert an area in your home for safety. Safety is the key. I had my father living with me until safety was such a concern for him because he drove off, ended up in Yuba City, California. When I lived in California, he was 200 miles away from my home because he got lost because he had dementia. So you have to pay attention. You have to put long-term care uh, things in place early and get the whole family involved. Caregiving is a family affair, period. And how would you deal, or how do you suggest families deal with some of the stress um, or guilt that comes along with caregiving? 
There's a lot of guilt. There's a lot of stress. I always share with folks to have a family meeting. And who's ever really, really good at talking to doctors and don't mind the, the smell of urine or whatever they have to go through, let that be the primary quote unquote caregiver that's caring for the parent. If someone's really great with finances, let that person be the financial advisor for the caregiver. You gotta divvy up responsibilities. And if you have a 12 year old or two year old at home, have them to read a book to your loved one or pick flowers or full clothes. Everybody has to get involved and you can actually do that. That's why I have eight books that I've written. My books are in libraries throughout the world. So a person doesn't even have to buy a book. They could go and check one out and that will help them because I have a list of things to do that's gonna help the caregiver and their family on their journey. And it's really a beautiful journey when you're prepared. All right, Carolyn, so much information. We don't have time for all of it, but if you want more caregiving advice, you can head over to carolynabrent.com.